nodus colla tenet celso pendentia tigno. By his own hand he met his end, a noose from a high beam cradling his broken neck. The stoic colouring of Raimondi's final letter, the stoic associations of his self-inflicted end, are in a sense fitting. By any estimate, Raimondi's life experience exemplifies the determined struggle against adversity, which the Stoic creed was designed to assist. Well, at the outset I remarked that I had chosen my two portraits uh, very deliberately. It will be apparent that in choosing Gasparino Barzitza, I was not motivated by a desire to bewitch you with an enchanting tale. Let us be honest. Barzitza's life has none of the ingredients of an exciting story. No intrigue, no scandal. His name has not become a byword for any of the vices, natural or unnatural. We are unlikely, I think, to see the film Bart Sietze. <laughs> In fact, Bart Sietze's life story is a chronicle of the ordinary. In Cosma Raimondi, I have brought before you one who regrets to say it, a failure. He was a young man with high hopes and a fierce determination to win renown. But he did not make it. Hampered from the start by a poverty which he was never able to escape, he was continually denied the chance to build upon his early promise. His little treatise on eloquence gained a local reading, but it did not become part of the permanent record. His chances at employment were few and far between and never led to a permanent position. Potential patrons disappointed him. <coughs> Friends there were, but never influential enough. Raimondi struggled <coughs> through life as best he could. His horizons always brighter than the near ground keeping faith with the ancients whom he loved, until he reached the point where failure finally brought his sad life to a close. If he was remembered at all, it was by very few. However, if Barzitz's life can only be described as dull, and Raimondi's as pathetically unrewarded, these two do present examples from which historians might draw a useful lesson. For by and large, historians and historians of the Renaissance no less than others tend to be attracted by the colorful figures of an age. Those whose actions helped to sh shape the course of political and military events those whose talents gave birth to works of lasting genius in art, music, literature and philosophy, or to significant discoveries in medicine or science. This is natural enough, and one can fairly say that these figures have earned their place. The consequence is, however, that by focusing, if not exclusively, then at least primarily, upon the dominant individuals, historians run the risk of presenting a distorted picture. All would concede that any history of uh, the Renaissance should feature and feature prominently those whom we may call the Vomini Famosi, the Polizianos, the Erasmuses, the Bembos and the Mirandolas. A truly 
representative history, I would argue, should also leave room for those of lesser note, those who are no less representative of their age. So as our attention is drawn, as it inevitably is, to the luminaries, whose lives and glittering careers have shaped in our minds the very image of the Renaissance. Let us remember the Bartzitzas and the Raimondis. Since for every humanist who gained a position of influence and renown, there were others whose training gained them nothing more grand or lasting than a day's wage and some, not even that. But, lest you should think I am presuming to say something new, let me leave you with the words of Virginia Woolf. Is not anyone who has lived a life and left a record of it worthy of a biography? The failures, as well as the successes, the humble, as well as the illustrious. And what is greatness? And what is smallness?